Oh yeah, today we're learning English with one of the original Spider-Man movies. Let's go! Who is Spider-Man? He's a criminal, that's who he is. A vigilante, a public menace. What's he doing on my front page? We sold out four printings. Sold out? Every copy. Tomorrow morning, Spider-Man, page one, with a decent picture this time. Move Conway to page seven. There's a problem with page seven. And make it page eight and give him 10% off. Okay. And make it 5%. That can't be done. Get out of here! Problem is, we don't have a decent picture. Eddie's been on it for weeks. We can barely get a glimpse of him. Oh, what, is he shy? If we can get a picture of Julia Roberts in a thong, we can certainly get a picture of this weirdo. Put an ad on the front page. Cash money for a picture of Spider-Man. He doesn't want to be famous, and I'll make him infamous. All right, so now we are going to explain all of the vocabulary and pronunciation of that clip to you. But quickly before we do, I want to let you know that if you're new here, every week we make fun lessons just like this one so that you can understand fast speaking natives without getting lost, without missing the jokes, and without subtitles. Just like Neelam who says that our lessons are helping him to get confident speaking. And your comprehension and communication skills are going to improve a lot too. All you have to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell down below so you don't miss any of our new lessons. Who is Spider-Man? He's a criminal, that's who he is. A vigilante, a public menace. Mr. Janison calls Spider-Man a vigilante and a menace. A vigilante is someone who illegally punishes criminals and tries to prevent crime, usually because they think the police are not doing this effectively. We might also think of other superheroes like Batman as vigilantes. Let's watch an example. I'm sick of these smart ass punks who keep changing the rules and think they can get away with anything they want. I'm gonna pay this guy a visit. Haley, text me his address. I'm going with you. Me too. Oh, no, no, nobody's going anywhere, okay? We're not vigilantes. Shotgun? No! No weapons! A menace is a person or thing that may cause harm or damage. Here's an example from Mr. Jennison and Peter Parker himself. Spider-Man, hero or menace? Exclusive Daily Bugle photos. Menace? He was protecting that armor I'll tell you what, Atticus, you take the pictures, I'll make up the headlines, okay? All right? That okay with you? Yes, sir. Goody. We sold out four printings. Sold out? Every copy. In a sentence like, the ticket sold out, or the arena is sold out, sold out means that there are no more tickets or spots or seats available. A printing is the amount of copies a newspaper prints at a time. The amount of copies is usually based on how many the newspaper thinks it's going to sell. So, because they sold out the first printing, they had to keep printing not two, not three, but four printings. Tonight is the LA premiere of Sophie's Choice the Musical, and uh, it sold out in seconds, but the theater reserved a few amazing house seats for an online lottery. Problem is, we don't have a decent picture. Eddie's been on it for weeks. We can barely get a glimpse of him. By Eddie has been on it, he means that Eddie has been working on or trying to get a good picture of Spider-Man. Sometimes we use I'm on it to say that we will start working on something immediately. I've got some work to do and I'm going to go out and run some errands and when I get back, this better be cleaned up. Oh, oh, don't worry, I'm on it. <laughs> oh, oh. Guys, we're right out of time, what's the plan? That guard won't move. We need a distraction. I'm on it. A glimpse is a quick look. We usually say this as to get a glimpse or catch a glimpse of something, or as a verb to glimpse something. I had a glimpse into the past. Are you stalking me? Are you stalking Lindsay? I asked you first. <laughs> but this is pathetic. Sitting outside a woman's house trying to catch a glimpse of her through the window. What kind of person does that? Barely, as used in I barely have any money, means to have very little money. It also means only with great difficulty or effort. I don't know if I'm up for this. I'm so emotional, I can barely think straight. Great, use that. Embrace the void. We also use barely to say almost not. She doesn't seem that great. We just saw her making out with a guy she barely even knows. If we can get a picture of Julia Roberts in a thong, we can certainly get a picture of this weirdo. Based on how he's saying this, and what he's trying to communicate, which of these do you think is a thong? 
Then you probably know what weird means. A weirdo is a person who acts in a weird way, especially socially. All relationships are difficult, but even more so when you're in one with a person who struggles with everyday social interactions, and frankly, who can strike some people as being kind of a weirdo. Sheldon, you're not a weirdo. I wasn't speaking about me. He doesn't want to be famous, and I'll make him infamous. Well known for being bad. An infamous person is known for committing evil acts, crimes, or doing things that most people disapprove of. That's the secret grand adventure of the infamous Jack Sparrow. He spent three days lying on a beach drinking rum. Welcome to the Caribbean, life. Let's now learn about some of the connected speech used in this clip. That can't be done. Get out of here! Mr. Jamison's way of speaking features many aspects of connected speech. This is the way natives cut and connect their words. So instead of saying, get out of here, he says, get out of here. He says it one more time here. Get out of here. Bring me more photos. This is how you'll hear people say this phrase most of the time. Okay, that's it. We're leaving. Guys, let's get out of here. Let's hear it one more time and then you can repeat it. That can't be done. Get out of here. He makes another interesting reduction here with the word them. He says um instead of them. I'll give you 200 bucks for all of them. That seems a little low. Take them somewhere else then. Now saying it one or the other way depends on the speaker and or context. Pay attention to how some characters from this movie say um and some say them. Consider pausing the video and repeating what they say. I love them. I'm going to give it to them. In spite of everything you've done for them, eventually they will hate you. Why bother? In a similar way, this character reduces him to im in the phrase, get a glimpse of him. We can barely get a glimpse of him. So I know you're watching this lesson because you get frustrated when you can't understand natives, whether it's in music, TV series, movies, or even in real life conversations. And this hurts your confidence. You're scared of actually using your English in real life. You want to be able to confidently understand natives in any situation, just like your mother tongue, right? Well, this is exactly why we created our Fluent with Friends course. Our goal for you with this course is to be able to learn the principles of real native speech so that you can understand natives no matter how fast we speak and have a lot of fun doing it. Now, in this 48-week course, you will learn alongside the first two seasons of the TV series Friends with innovative tools like power lessons, vocabulary memorization software, and more. And you even get access to our global community of English learners, the Fluency Circle. So do you want to try it? Well, you can do that for free with our three-part masterclass. All you have to do is click up here or down in the description below, and you can learn more and sign up for that right now. Hey Pete, you're probably looking for a, a job now, right? Um, Dad, maybe you can help him out. No, I, I appreciate it, but I'll be fine. There's no problem. I'll make a few calls. No, I couldn't accept it, sir. I like to earn what I get. I can find my own work. I respect that. You want to make it on your own, Steve? That's great. What other skills do you have, Parker? I was thinking of something in photography. They're crap. 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 Mega crap. I'll give you 200 bucks for all of them. That seems a little low. Take them somewhere else then. Sit down. Give me that. I'll give you 300. That's a standard freelance fee. Tear up page one, run that photo instead. Hey, Pete, you're probably looking for a, a job now, right? Um, Dad, maybe you can help him out. No, I, I appreciate it, but I'll be fine. There's no problem. I'll make a few calls. No, I couldn't accept it, sir. As you know, you can say to call someone, or you can say the phrase to make a call. Example, would you lend me your phone to make a quick call? By saying this as a phrase, Norman is also able to communicate the sense that he'll get in touch with people that can give Peter a job. 
Peter says he doesn't need help. No, I, I appreciate it, but I'll be fine. This is a very common alternative to say thank you. Want to learn more ways that natives say thank you? You can check out this lesson with friends after you finish this video. I like to earn what I get. I can find my own work. I respect that. You want to make it on your own steam. To make it means to succeed in a particular activity. Here, Penny uses a common collocation. Make it as a, followed by a profession. I want you right now to give me your 100% honest opinion. Do you think I have what it takes to really make it as an actress? Yes. So you think I'll be on TV and in movies and win awards? Wait a minute, what about that summer during college that you live with grandma and you tried to make it as a dancer? Do you realize we almost made it 10 years without that coming up? This also means to arrive at a certain place. We sometimes say, I won't be able to make it, when you can't go somewhere for some reason. Maybe you forgot, but we have tickets to the Jets game next week. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, buddy, but I don't think I'm going to be able to make it. We, we were going to go see the Jets! <laughs> On your own steam, or under your own steam, simply means to do something without any help. So, in this case, Peter Parker is trying to be very clear that he doesn't want to be given a job. He wants to find it on his own merit. That's to say, making an effort himself. The crap. 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 Mega crap. If you say that something is crap, you mean that it's of very bad quality. Keep in mind, this is not polite. Example. They sell a lot of cheap stuff, but most of it is crap. The use of mega here just intensifies the word. It's a mega big shopping center. Maybe 300. That's a standard freelance fee. Tear up page one, run that photo instead. Peter Parker is a freelance photographer. When you're a freelancer, you're not employed by any company. There are freelance journalists, freelance writers, etc. The opposite idea is expressed with the word in-house. Anyway, now I'm a um, freelance massage therapist, um, which, you know, isn't always steady money, but at least I don't pay taxes. <laughs> A fee is money that you pay to a professional or institution for their work. Then he says, Tear up page one, run that photo instead. Literally, to tear something or to tear something up is to pull something so it separates into pieces, as in this illustration. But here, he probably means it in a figurative way, meaning to replace page one of the newspaper for one that has a picture of Spider-Man. Run here is used in a similar way as when we say, for example, a movie or TV show is running, which means it's actively being shown. So if he's running a picture in the newspaper, it means they're showing it. Spider-Man wasn't attacking the city, he was trying to save it, that's slander. It is not, I resent that. Slander is spoken, in print it's libel. You don't trust anybody, that's your problem. I trust my barber. What are you, his lawyer? Get out of here. Let him sue me. Get rich like a normal person. That's what made this country... Jameson, you slime! Who's the photographer who takes the pictures of Spider-Man? I don't know who he is. His stuff comes in the mail. You're lying! I swear! He's the one who can bring me to it. I don't know who he is. You are useless, you. Set him down, tough guy. Speak of the devil. Spider-Man, I knew you two were in this together. I... Hey, kiddo, mm -hmm. let mom and dad talk for a minute, will you? Sleep. Spider-Man wasn't attacking the city, he was trying to save it. That's slander. It is not. I resent that. Slander is spoken. In print, it's libel. To resent is to feel angry or upset about a situation or about something that someone has done, especially because you think that it is not fair. I'm going to Thailand with some friends from high school. Well, a high school. And if I don't do it now, I'll never get to go. And I'll always resent you for it. You don't want me to resent you, do you? So you're dumping me? Let's be adults about this. Then, he makes a point about the difference between slander and libel. They both mean the same. They're a false statement about someone, intended to damage the good opinion that people have of that person. Slander is spoken, and libel is written. 
Hey, if you love Spider-Man, then I bet you will also really enjoy this lesson that we made with the Avengers. You can check that out after you finish this lesson. What are you, his lawyer? Get out of here. Let him sue me. Get rich like a normal person. That's what made this country... To sue means to make a legal claim against someone, especially for money, because they have harmed you in some way. Michael ran through the sliding glass door because he thought he heard the ice cream truck. <laughs> Stop. Stop it. I mean, I like ice cream, okay? Sue me. Oh. Ha no, don't. I shouldn't say that jokingly because she will sue me. She <laughs> loves to sue. She loves lawsuits. Mr. Jameson is exaggerating here, but by saying, let him sue me, get rich like a normal person, gives the cultural insight that Americans are famous for suing other people or companies for virtually any reason. We saw this in our recent How I Met Your Mother lesson. I don't care, it's dumb. Let's go buy something that's bad for us and then sue the people who made it. That's American, Robin. You are useless, you. Set him down, tough guy. Speak of the devil! Spider-Man! I knew you two were in this together! I... Set means to put someone or something in a position. This verb can take many prepositions, like in, into, on, down, or back. Well, I found the, I found the nail gun. Oh, yay. Weirdest thing, it was wrapped in an old towel stuffed in a box on the top shelf of the closet. Well, just set it down on the counter. The expression, speak of the devil, is used when you are speaking about a person and then that person appears. Son of a bitch. This is... Pardon me. Oh, speak of the devil. We were just talking about you. Have a seat. Okay. Spider-Man, I knew you two were in this together. I... This is a way of saying they're working together. This has a deeper meaning when you say this to a friend, for example. If you and someone else say we're in this together, it means you support and encourage each other to do something that's challenging. Hey kiddo, let mom and dad talk for a minute, will ya? We sometimes add this as a mini question at the end of a command. Let's see some examples. Phil, help me saddle up my horse, will ya? <laughs> Tie my apron, will ya? My pleasure. Uh, not, my, not my pleasure, of course. That sounds weird. And I'm not a weird man. Who is Spider-Man? He's a criminal, that's who he is. A vigilante, a public menace. What's he doing on my front page? We sold out four printings. Sold out? Every copy. Tomorrow morning, Spider-Man, page one, with a decent picture this time. Move Conway to page seven. There's a problem with page seven. And make it page eight and give him 10% off. Okay. And make it 5%. That can't be done. Get out of here! Problem is, we don't have a decent picture. Eddie's been on it for weeks. We can barely get a glimpse of him. What is he, shy? If we can get a picture of Julia Roberts in a thong, we can certainly get a picture of this weirdo. Put an ad on the front page. Cash money for a picture of Spider-Man. He doesn't want to be famous, and I'll make him infamous. Hey, Pete, you're probably looking for a, a job now, right? Um, Dad, maybe you can help him out. No, I, I appreciate it, but I'll be fine. It's no problem. I'll make a few calls. No, I couldn't accept it, sir. I like to earn what I get. I can find my own work. I respect that. You want to make it on your own steam. That's great. What other skills do you have, Parker? I was thinking of something in photography. They're crap. 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 Mega crap. I'll give you 200 bucks for all of them. That seems a little low. Take them somewhere else then. Sit down. Give me that. I'll give you 300. That's a standard freelance fee. Tear up page one, run that photo instead. Spider-Man wasn't attacking the city. He was trying to save it. That's slander. It is not. I resent that.
Slander is spoken. In print, it's libel. You don't trust anybody. That's your problem. I trust my barber. What are you, his lawyer? Get out of here. Let him sue me. Get rich like a normal person. That's what made this country... Who's the photographer who takes the pictures of Spider-Man? I don't know who he is. His stuff comes in the mail. You're lying! I swear. He's the one who can bring me to him. I don't know who he is. You are useless. You. Set him down, tough guy. Speak to the devil. Spider-Man, I knew you two were in this together. I knew hey, kiddo, mm -hmm. let mom and dad talk for a minute, will you? Sleep. <laughs> awesome job today. You can continue learning English with us by checking out one of these other lessons over here that I know you're going to love. And now it's time to go beyond the classroom and live your English. Oh yeah!